First, I just want to get your quick take on the debate. Did you, did you see a clear winner? We've been looking at the predicted odds uh, all morning long. We've seen a bit of a bump for Vice President Harris. But in your mind, was there an actual winner? Uh, well, I think the winner was every Democratic voter out there who breathed a huge sigh of relief, uh, you know, compared to what Democratic voters went through with the Biden debate. Uh, they got to feel a lot better this morning. Harris performed well. She got under Trump's skin. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the reality is, unless you have an opponent who does as poorly as Biden did last time, very hard to get a knockout in one of these debates. All right. So hard to get a knockout during the debate. Um, something I want to ask you about, kind of a pop culture moment after the debate, Taylor Swift giving her endorsement to Vice President Harris. Is that meaningful for the November election? Yeah, I wrote about that. I can't tell anymore if that was last night or early this morning. Uh, but I think that's a huge deal. I mean, I think that's going to be a talking point all day now, uh, particularly, you know, her connection now with the NFL. Uh, it's going to get talked about over the weekend when people are watching football. Uh, and so if you're a Democrat and you had your candidate who performed well uh, in the debate and then you get the Taylor Swift endorsement, Again, you went to bed pretty happy. All right. Speaking of endorsements, um, there wasn't a lot of economic talk here. There wasn't a lot of financial policy talk during this debate. But Vice President Harris, she went out of her way to talk about some endorsements that um, she has for her economic policies. I want to play the soundbite for you, and I just want to get your take on it. The best economists in our country, if not the world, have reviewed our relative plans for the future of America. What Goldman Sachs has said? is that Donald Trump's plan would make the economy worse, mine would strengthen the economy. What the Wharton School has said is Donald Trump's plan would actually explode the deficit. You know, a lot of talk about rising debt here in the U.S., Jared. Is this a meaningful point? Is this something that you think resonates with voters? Uh, yeah. So, I mean, you know, the debt's a really complicated issue when it comes to voters. Generally, Republican voters care a lot more. Yet it, it's hard to argue that Trump isn't the bigger spender among the two. Uh, and this would be tax spending rather than uh, social safety net spending. And, you know, as soon as I saw that Goldman Sachs report from, uh, you know, almost a week ago now, I knew it was going to show up in this debate. Uh, it was tailor made for her to throw uh, Trump just like she did. I thought she handled that well. And then to add in the Wharton's uh, analysis, you know, that's where Trump went to school. Another way to needle the former president. Uh, I, again, you know, it was just really smart moves, but I'm not sure it really causes any Trump voters to suddenly say, you know, I need to rethink uh, how I might cast my ballot. All right. One thing that we didn't see a lot of deep conversation about were tariffs. And in a lot of ways, that seems like that might be one of the defining issues of these two different campaigns um, and also the inflationary aspects of tariffs, potentially. Um, in your mind, as we go as we look after this uh, debate, are tariffs going to become a bigger issue when it comes to this campaign? Yeah, I mean, I think both sides are emphasizing tariffs, and I'm surprised that it only took up, you know, maybe three or four minutes in, in a pretty long debate. Uh, you know, Harris has defined this as the Trump sales tax. Trump argues this is his solution to paying off the debt, uh, to, you know, financing additional tax cuts. Uh, so I think we're going to hear a lot more about tariffs. And, and what they can do and how much money they can really raise. Uh, you know, and again, like tariffs impede free trade. And, you know, free trade has been the underpinning of the Western economic model for decades now. And so it's, it's a really big deal and it deserves more attention than it's been getting.